Our planet is host to all kinds of fascinating life forms. And only naturally, among them are all manner of deadly horrors. Creatures who wield venom seem particularly fearsome. The concept that a single unannounced snake or spider bite could spell your unavoidable end can shake our understanding of life security. Yet, most people still overlook one of nature's most deadly predators. A group of animals armed with toxins more deadly than the worst rattlesnakes or black widow spiders. I'm talking, of course, about snails. <laughs> Terrifying, aren't they? Well, maybe this one isn't, but there are snails that can and do kill people. They're called cone snails. The first recorded cone snail related incident was back in 1670 and recently published data tells us that since then there have been 36 recorded deaths following a cone snail sting. But what's most impressive about them isn't their toxicity. It's how they're at the forefront of cutting edge research into potentially revolutionary new medicines. That is what this series is all about. How these killer snails are being used to develop killer cures. You will not find killer snails eating the plants in your garden. They don't live on land. But if you like picking up pretty seashells when you're at the beach, or even just paddling in the tropical seas, you'd better know what to look out for and where. Because as soon as you dip into those warm ocean waters, you've entered cone snail territory. And if you're in cone snail territory, you better be looking out for shells that look like this. This shell has the signature cone shape the cone snails earn their name from. But this particular pattern belongs to Conus geographus, or the geographer cone. A species so deadly that experts reckon it's responsible for most, if not all, cone snail related fatalities. Scientists have calculated that a single geographer cone has enough venom to kill 700 people. Statistics show that if you do get stung, you have a 70% chance of dying as a result. So, think twice before you mess with a pretty seashell. It might just have a nasty surprise in store for you. So, why are cone snails so poisonous? Unlike the snails in your garden, which eat plants, cone snails are predators. They don't eat humans, as even the biggest cone snails don't get much bigger than this. Cone snails are specialist hunters with different species targeting different kinds of prey. Some specialize in targeting other snails, while others prey on worms. What's more surprising is that some cone snails prey on live fish. Thing is, have you ever tried catching a fish? It's hard enough as a human, but cone snails don't have nets or even hands. What's that trick? This is where the cone snail story really starts to get interesting. Cone snails have developed powerful, complex venoms, along with hunting strategies that allow them to get close to their prey, from where they can immobilize and devour them. Let's take a quick look at a few examples. This striatus cone snail is demonstrating how it uses guerrilla tactics to get close to its targets, spending daylight hours hidden beneath a layer of sand. In the dark of night, cone snails become active. This unsuspecting fish has fallen for the trap, 
settling in for the night just inches away from a deadly Bellatus cone snail. It detects the fish using its taste-sensitive siphon, the only part of it left protruding above the sand. Having sensed the fish, it deploys its proboscis. And in one strike, delivers a lethal injection of venom. It's all over for the fish before it even knows what happened. Let's see that again, step by step this time. The tip of the proboscis harbors a hollow harpoon-like tooth, which serves two purposes. First, it penetrates the flesh of the fish and delivers the venom. Then, its harpoon-like tooth hooks into and tethers the fish preventing it from escaping while the fish suffers convulsions from the venom. Paralysis sets in within seconds, allowing the snail to reel in the helpless fish and eat it alive. Other species, like this emperor cone snail, prey exclusively on worms. As you can see, the strategy is very similar to the fish hunters. A third group preys on other snails, some snail hunting species even prey on other types of cone snail. What they all have in common is that they rely on their venom to capture prey. To understand why people end up getting killed by cone snails, we need to understand that the cone snails have developed venoms that allow them to do more than just hunt their prey. Their venoms contain substances that boost their chances of surviving amidst the many threats they face in the sea. Cone snails don't only use their venoms on their prey. When attacked by another creature, they can often use their venoms in self-defense. In this clip, the cone snail on the right has detected that the larger cone snail on the left poses a threat. It manages to strike first, paralyzing the larger snail before it has a chance to attack, and then makes its escape. Cone snails also face attacks from many other sea creatures, including fish. Any human who comes into contact with a cone snail runs the risk of triggering exactly this kind of defensive behavior. In a place like the Philippines, where many cone snails are found, shellfish are a common source of food. Fishermen may encounter cone snails whilst they are sorting the catch from their nets. Many people collect seafood by hand on a daily basis, putting them at risk of picking up a deadly cone snail. Some cone snails are sought after by shell collectors. Certain species have in shells that are worth thousands of dollars. Divers in the Philippines collect these by hand. Tourists, spotting a beautiful shell at the beach, may pick up a cone snail without realizing it's dangerous. Either way, the cone snail will probably perceive this unwanted attention as a threat and try to defend itself and escape. If a person is unlucky enough to be injected with a cone snail's venom, they are in grave danger. The initial symptoms can include intense pain, numbness, and tingling. In severe cases, there can be muscle paralysis, and in the very worst cases, Respiratory paralysis may occur, and this may lead to death. If you remember nothing else from today, remember what they look like, this. And remember that if you or somebody you're with get stung by one, you must seek professional medical assistance immediately if you want to survive. Now you might know about the killer side of the Killer Cure story, but the next episode is about the cures that have already been developed from their deadly venoms. The kind of cure that's worth 700 million dollars. In the next installment of Killer Cures, 
Um, and I didn't think it was such a good idea, but uh, he did the experiment anyway. <laughs> and that's a funny story because uh, uh, it was worth a lot to some people, <laughs> right? Not to us. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed watching Killer Cures with me, Max Taylor. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.